the power obtained by a planet in horoscope is of much importance. Many combinations can be present there, but many times we see that the combinations do not fructify. Why? Because planets are not powerful. When planets are not powerful, they will not be able to produce their results. Now, in this power, as we have already talked about planets in exaltation, Mulutrikon and Swarashi, one more important thing is there, the planets which are Vargottam. You see, Vargottam is a planet which is in the same Rashi and same Navamsh. So, same Rashi in the Rashi chart and same Rashi in the Navamsh chart. Out of all these divisional charts, Navamsh is given a very special importance. That Navamsh is very, very important and the planet in the same Rashi and same Navamsh happens to be Vargottam planet. And then you see this exaltation or planet in owner Rashi or planet in debilitation, planet in friendly Rashi or inimical Rashi is also considered in Navamsh. So Navamsh is like, you know, in a horoscope analysis, Navamsh and the Rashi chart are 50-50. Now, generally people see divisional charts as a separate chart. So they will read the first house, second house, third house of Navamsh also, which is incorrect. If you see any of my video, which deals with divisional chart calculations, then you will understand why I am saying so. So first thing you should make very clear that there are no houses in any of the divisional charts. That is point number one. So basically, whenever we have to talk about house lordship, the planet is lord of seventh house. There is only one seventh lord. That is the seventh lord of Rashi chart. Other than that, there is no seventh lord of any other divisional chart whatsoever. This is the classical traditional approach. This is what you should follow. Now the speciality, is Virgo, the speciality with Vargottam is though Rahu Ketu cannot become exalted or cannot go into own Rashis because Rahu and Ketu own no Rashis. Though some people believe in some Gemini opinion or some classics have given different opinions, but none of that works. How I use exaltation, debilitation, etc. for the Rahu Ketu, I have discussed in one of my video, which was on Jagannath Hora series, which is like, you know, my greatest research on Rahu Ketu by this name, the video is there. So you can find that to understand how I deal with Rahu Ketu. Now, speciality with Vargottam is Rahu Ketu can also become Vargottam. Now, one thing is there, whenever you see our Guttam planet, you should understand that this planet will give Rajyog. First point is there. Now, what is Rajyog? Rajyog is a combination for power, status, authority. So, this planet who is being Vargottam will give you power, status, authority. Will give you power, status, authority in the Shantara Dasha, point one. Secondarily, when you follow the significations of the planet, it gives you power, authority, success, enjoyment, name, fame, status, it is all there. Now, what do I mean by following the signification of the planet? You see, everyone does some work or other work in the world. There are very few people who do no work. Now, generally, we decide work as per our interests and all of these things, but interests and education, this can be developed, of course. So when one follows a powerful planet or a planet who is giving Raj Yoga, specifically a Vargottam planet, what happens? One becomes very successful. I always say that if someone comes and asks me, sir, can I become a plumber? Can I become an electrician? What I will answer them. Like, if you want, you can become anything. Then what is the role of astrology? You can become anything. You can become plumber, electrician, whatever you want. But if you choose an astrological correct profession, then in that particular scenario, 100% of your horoscope's ability will be at use. And then you will live a life of happiness, enjoyment, contentment, and the maximum of professional status and income you will be able to enjoy, otherwise not. So this is first and the foremost point that you should understand. If a planet is powerful, exalted, Vargottam, Multrikon, Swarashi, you should follow the traits of planets. Most preferably, you should have your behavior, attribute, dressing sense like the planet and best will be that if you can choose the profession of the planet, then what will happen? Raja Yoga will actually fructify in your life and a name, fame, status will be there. Most importantly, what I have seen that Vargottam specifically gives very good result related to profession. If the ascendant is Vargottam, then the person is professionally very well to do one of the top in his profession. According to me, Vargottam makes you one of the top in your profession. If any planet is Vargottam, if you follow the signification of the planet, if you go and do the work related to that planet, then you can achieve the top spot in your profession. 
in the dasha antra dasha of the planet also who is vargottam one gets very high status name fame recognition one of the top position in their profession because there is top position in profession name fame status also comes from the planet who is vargottam this i am adding you from my experience now additionally as i have already talked about multiplication vargottam planet is also multiplied by 2 so whatever result is given vargottam planet gives twice the result so if it is the fourth lot it gives two properties two vehicles if it is the seventh lot it gives two marriages etc this should be understood now with respect to vargottam planet sometime confusion is there planet is vargottam in exaltation rashi planet is vargottam in debilitation rashi sir how to deal with it see what i have just told you the only problem why people cannot understand astrology is that they listen less and put their own fantasy or their own inferences more let's try to understand if a planet is exalted the planet is powerful and he can give very strong result vargottam what i told you that vargottam gives you rajyo so if a planet is exalted and vargottam it gives you rajyo and because the planet is powerful it gives you highest level of rajyo greatest level of rajyo and because the planet is exalted the rajyo will also sustain for very long the first point if the planet is debilitated and vargottam in that particular scenario vargottam planet will give you rajyog but vargottam planet but debilitated planet is a weak planet so the rajyog will be there but it will be small level of rajyog say one is the top ceo of one of the fortune 100 companies is exalted rajyog right second point is there is a import export company like multiple import export companies are there in the you know country there is one import export country you say in nasik there is one import export company and person is a ceo of that import export company so this person is also having power not as much as the first one who is ceo of a fortune 100 company but he is also having power so vargottam planets gives rajyog if it is an exalted planet exalted vargottam it is higher level of rajyog and the rajyog sustains for very long whereas if the planet is debilitated vargottam then it is a lower level of rajyog and rajyog also does not sustain for long now not sustaining for long is like you know the person is enjoying rajyog but enjoying it for 10 years only debilitated vargottam exalted vargottam is person have you know reached at the top of their profession around the age of 30 32 and remain there at the age of 60 65 right so this particular thing is there one should not get confused vargottam tam gives the rajyog status to the planet this planet is able to give rajyog now the rajyog will be of great level for more time or for less time this have to be understood accordingly so it's not like that if the planet becomes vargottam the result of debilitation will be gone of course not i'm never telling you that the you know result of the debilitation will go if the planet is vargottam and until and unless this thing is told then why people make inferences on their own i don't understand like if you are making inferences on your own then make inferences on your own only don't listen to others don't learn from others if you are learning from someone me or anyone else then follow the person whom you are learning why people of kali yuga are remaining in so much confused state i never understand however So this is the point number one. Vargottam planet gives you rajyog. Other than that, Vargottam planet gives you multiplicity also. This one particular point is there. Right? This point should be very clear. Other than that, Vargottam planet, following the profession of planet is good, gives you top position in your profession. I have already told. Now, other than that, another set of question is that we. if the planet is exalted in navamsha chart or own rash in navamsha chart then what will happen is the exaltation of rashi chart and the exaltation of navamsha chart equal certainly not because the exaltation in rashi is the original astronomical exaltation whereas the exaltation in navamsha chart is not very much the real exaltation but classically going to it the exaltation of navam shet sakra is given more importance as compared to exaltation of rashi so simply it is told that even if the planet is exalted in rashi but becomes debilitated in navam in that particular scenario the debilitation of navam should be taken now in this scenario see if exactly this happens that the planet is exalted in rashi and debilitated in navam then what i have seen generally this planet is not very good for material life 
as told in class six, right? This planet gives bad result for material life only, but for spirituality. If the person takes on to the spiritual path, then this makes the native very successful. If the planet is exalted in Rashi, debilitated. Debilitated in Rashi, exalted in Navamsh is very good for material progress, not very good for spiritual progress as such. But in both these cases, <clears throat> the position of Navamsh is the utmost condition. The position of Navamsh is most important. This is what should be understood. However, I cannot say that if the planet is exalted in Rashi but debilitated in Navamsh, it is completely lost. No. See, you will never make an extreme decision. Take this as a point from my side. You will always have a balanced approach. Right? Now, if the planet is exalted in Rashi, debilitated in Navamsh, or debilitated in Rashi, exalted in Navamsh, one chart is more powerful. One chart indicates the real condition. This should be taken as a mediocre planet, according to me. This should be taken as a mediocre normal planet. And generally, normal planets are good for spirituality. Spiritual progress gives good qualities, etc. to the native. Right? Generally, you will see that those who have a debilitated Venus have good behavior with women, respect to women and all of these things. This debilitation of Venus in Navamsh. If debilitation of Venus is happening in Rashi, then they are very disrespectful towards woman relationship, etc. Right. Though when you talk to these people, they will not admit that they are disrespectful. When a thief have admitted that they are thieves, certainly they have never admitted that something that you have to understand. Right. So that one thing is there. Other than that, now say planet is in a normal condition. Now this normal planet, normal in Rashi chart, friendly Rashi, inimical Rashi, that kind of. If this normal planets become debilitated or exalted in Navamsh, then what happens is a question. Another thing is there, see, planet in own Rashi in D1 chart, debilitated in Navamsh, then you should understand that exaltation, debilitation are highest condition. Own Rashi, Bhraguttam, sorry, own Rashi, Multrikon is lower than that. So certainly a planet which is in own Rashi in Rashi chart, but becomes debilitated in Navamsh have certainly lost its position, which is bad. A planet which is in own Rashi in Rashi chart or Murutrikon in Rashi chart but becomes debil exalted in Navamsh have certainly increased his position. So one thing you should understand, Dikho, if I have to give you the differentiation, I will tell you that Navamsh is the result that you get. Because Navamsh is fortune. So the result that you get. Now the point is, if a planet is powerful in Rashi chart, it is indicating your approach, what you are doing. What you are getting is generally Navamsh. So for an example, you say if the seventh lord is in own Rashi, in Rashi chart, then your behavior towards your spouse is very good. Now this becomes exalted in Navamsh. The condition has improved. Now your behavior with your life partner is very good and they reward you amply. Their behavior towards you is even better. Right? Even more good. Even better. Even more beneficial. Right? If the person is having planet in own Rashi in D1 chart, seventh lord you say, then your behavior towards your life partner is very good. But if the planet becomes debilitated in Navamsh, this will be the seventh lord of Rashi chart. Then in that scenario, though your approach towards marriage is good, you are respecting the life partner, you are not getting same in the return and the life partner is disrespectful, etc. So you say, if I actually have to differentiate between the Rashi and Navamsh, then I will tell you that Rashi is your approach. Rashi is what you are doing. Rashi is when, there, when you are in control, what will you do? And Navamsh is the outcome. Navamsh is the result. No, because Navamsh is the outcome, Navamsh is the result, and Navamsh is what fortune have to play, how the fortune is playing, certainly Navamsh becomes more important. This is the particular reason sages have told that if a planet is exalted in Rashi, debilitated in Navamsh, it should be considered as debilitation. It should be considered as bad only. Now Rishi have told it should be considered as bad only. He have never told it should be considered as debilitated only. And this particular thing that the sages have told, according to me, is an exaggeration. You should understand. That if the planet becomes debilitated in Navamsh, he will not lose his Rashi position. He will still remain exalted in Rashi only. So middle way have to be found out. This way, we should read between the lines of what the sages have told. Only then astrology will open up to us. Now talking about the result of Navamsh, three things are there. 
See, everyone have hopes, aspirations, desires, etc. Now, good people, practical people, intelligent people have real hopes, desires, and aspirations. Right. So, you know, this really happens. This can really happen. People understand what they are, what they deserve, what they require. Good people, intelligent people know that. And you see, you become good and intelligent and sensible when you have good planets. So regarding any house, because as I just told you, Navam, she's the result outcome. How, what the fortune have in store for you? So a planet is going into own Rashi in Navamsh or becoming exalted in Navamsh or you see becoming Varguttam in Navamsh. In that particular scenario, whatever wishes, desires, etc. related to the planet you are having, that will be fulfilled. Now, your wishes, desires, etc. can be your personal, but generally speaking, take fourth lord, fourth lord is Varguttam or own Rashi or exalted in Navamsh. In that scenario, what will happen? Generally, people have a wish regarding property. Suppose people have a wish and desire that I should have a property. That property should be sufficient for me. That that property should be in good location. I should be able to live there peacefully. Some luxuries, etc. should also be there. And you will have your personal wishes and desires, right? I want a property in the center of the city. I want property outside the city. I want villa. I want one main home and one secondary home and all of that. So when the planet is exalted, Onarashi or Vargottam in Navamsh, in that particular scenario, whatever are your wishes, desires, etc. related to the house lordship of planet and natural significations of planet, that comes true. And not only yours, based on the current scenario, whatever can be a wish, desire of a normal person, that happens with you. So in fact, even if you don't have a desire to own two properties, but generally in current scenario, what is running what is there in the world right now, generally people have one main property and one, you know, like one second home people have for their holidays, etc. That will come to fulfill, that will come to pass. Your wishes will be fulfilled. That's the basic point. Now, second set of thing is if the planet becomes debilitated in Navam's chart or becomes bad in Navam's chart, then what will happen? Then in that particular scenario, the First of all, person loses the opportunity. I don't say, see, any bad combination, you see, bad combination is a bad combination, a bad result will happen, but you can change everything. That's why you are human, right? You are not a dog, not a cat who is responsible on the mercy of people, right? You can do it yourself. The major purpose of astrology is that you understand what is in the store and you try to change it by your consciousness, decision after thinking and all of that, right? That is the basic point. This is why astrology is made. Our sages did not only make it for prediction. Prediction also anyone can do. Right? Prediction can done through multiple ways. The speciality of astrology is you can change things also. So generally what happens when the planet is afflicted in Navamsh, goes to debilitated Navamsh, inimical Navamsh in that particular scenario, your wishes desires, etc. related to the signification of planet, natural signification of planet also, house lordship signification of the planet also, these are generally not fulfilled. So say if the 10th lord is debilitated in Navamsh or goes to inimical Navamsh, in that scenario, one wants, generally people want profession where they have respect also, name, fame, status also, good income also. Now, in this case, good income is there, name, fame, status is not there, name, fame, status is there, good income is not there. If status and good income is there, then fame is not there, name is not there, respect is not there. Right. So, only partial dreams are fulfilled. This is first point. Secondarily, what happens? That person loses a lot of opportunities. Generally, when the planet is bad in Navamsh, then related to that planet, you lose a lot of opportunities. So, say when the Seventh Lord is debilitated or Seventh Lord is going into inimical or bad Navamsh. In that particular scenario, what happens that there is a very good life partner who can be best for you. And because of your, you know, ignorance or your behavior, you lose a chance to be with that life partner. In a stead, you choose someone with whom you struggle. So loss of opportunities, loss of 
good chances happen now this loss can be mitigated this loss can be controlled if you make proper use of astrology before marriage if you do proper matchmaking etc this loss can be taken care of this loss can be compensated the thing related to fortune is that all wishes and desires may not be fulfilled that is okay that is the part of luck but you do your part and try to make maximum try to make maximum things fulfill as it can be right because if you do nothing then to nothing will happen even for the partial realization of result you will have to do the work right that's the very very basic point right so this is the difference between these two types of planet and one more thing is there this i always teach this is my very basic of astrology every student who have even learned one class seriously with me they know that because i am talking of navamsh and i am talking of fortune one thing you understand two type of setup is there planet is going into navamsh of a malefic the planet is going in the navamsh of sun mars saturn this is a malefic or planet is conjoined with sun mars saturn or rahu in navamsh it is malefic then the planet is going in the navamsh of jupiter mercury moon venus or conjoined with these planets in navamsh then the planet is either going into benefic navamsh or is connected with benefic in navamsh so what it does planet going into benefic navamsh or planet going into malefic navamsh let's understand one thing malefic planet are malefic because they indicate bad tendencies and mars is malefic because it indicates fight and fighting is not a good emotion sun is taken as a malefic in fact taken as a cruel planet because sun indicates ego and self sun indicates self respect when self respect is low it is bad when self respect is very high it turns into ego which is also bad so generally sun is taken as a bad planet but self respect is very necessary for this reason you cannot say it is completely bad so sun is taken as cruel in the same example saturn indicates misery diseases compromise and these are not good emotions these are bad emotions so malefic planets are malefic planets because they indicate bad things on the other hand jupiter indicates blessings mercury indicate having good resources because mercury is a prince he have everything at his disposal right moon also is very resourceful specifically with moon moon is very long living right moon is the soma moon is amar moon is always living moon to have drank the nectar so always sustaining in venus indicates enjoyment luxuries so benefic planets are benefic because they indicate good things and malefic planets are malefic because they indicate bad things bad emotions etc so when a planet goes to bad navamsh what happens that in the significations related to planet natural signification also house lordship also whenever i say significations related to planet natural signification house lordship both have to be considered this is standard from the first video i have made to this video to the next all the videos that i will make till the time i am alive this is my meaning okay <clears throat> so you say when the because strength weakness is another point right like if venus is debilitated in navamsh he is debilitated in a benefic rashi right or if mars is exalted in navamsh then he is exalted but into a malefic rashi so this difference you have to understand when the planet goes into benefic navamsh because navamsh is fortune it indicates the result that is coming the result that will come that will have benefic traits right so enjoyment happiness luxury etc as i have explained as per the planets will be there whereas when the planets are going into malefic navamsh then problems related to those malefic navamsh will be there so say if the fourth lord is going into the navamsh of saturn then if the planet is exalted vargottam fourth lord in the navamsh of saturn exalted vargottam swarashi then your wishes will be fulfilled if it is debilitated etc then your wishes will not be fulfilled that is another point but if the fourth lord goes into the navamsh of saturn and because it is a navamsh of a malefic misery struggle etc will come with property saturn also in case the disease so with the purchase of property property and as you settle down in property diseases miseries etc will also come on the other hand if the fourth lord goes to the navamsh of jupiter you say and you say it is debilitated in the navamsh of jupiter okay mercury is the fourth lord it is debilitated in pisces navamsh then okay your 100% result or dreams related to property may not be fulfilled 
But because it is the Namamsha of Jupiter, the blessings related to Jupiter will come. Now Jupiter indicates children, so one will be able to enjoy with children in this particular property. Right? Jupiter indicates wisdom and enjoyment. Like Jupiter is basically the Karka of happiness. So by living in this property, by purchasing this property, and every day you spend in this property, you will be happy. And you will be with your family members, you will enjoy with, ch with your children and all of that. So despite the fact that the dreams are not completely fulfilled, it is partially fulfilled only, enjoyment is there. So this way it should be understood. This way a synchronization should be made between the two planets. And between the two different types of planets, this way. Between the two different types of setups, sorry not planets. Between these two different types of setup, in this particular way, the synchronization should be made. And prediction should be done. Right? I hope that I have made the point very clear. That astrology is an endless journey and everything cannot be taught in one video. So other videos will keep on coming. I will keep on teaching you. Don't worry. Right? The thing is that if you are very serious about learning astrology, then you can join my courses also. Right? Courses and webinars are there that you can join. If you want to learn about planets in depth, or how this, you know, exaltation, debilitation, good Navamsh, bad Navamsh works. Then Navamsh course, which is in three parts, I think, Navamsh course level one, Navamsh course level two, advanced Navamsh course three, Navamsh course are there. Right, mastering the Rashi is there if you want to learn about Rashi's in depth. Mastering the Bhava, mastering the Graha, and mastering the birth chart. These three courses are there if you want to start with basics of Vedic astrology and want to learn the way I analyze horoscopes. So right, these courses you can consider if you want to learn deeper. Right.